TK Tennis. Today we're exposing the myths of the two-handed backhand. Is it really a righty dominated shot or is it really a lefty forehand? And what are the two secret fundamentals you need to know to hit a great two-handed backhand? So let's get started and then show you some pro footage to make sure it really hits home. The first two questions you need to ask yourself is where does the power come from and where does the control come from? The power comes from the core and here's how to prove it. When you take your racket back, let's say just to here, and you feel your core, it's relaxed. But if you take the racket back further, now it's loaded up. And that's where you're gonna be uncoiling from. So when you go to hit a two-handed backhand, you need to tell yourself to really turn and show the back of the shoulder to the, your opponent. That's how you know someone's fully coiled up. Now my core is engaged, and I'm ready to generate power. And that is the first fundamental that has to happen in order to generate efficient power. All the energy is stored up on the right side. Now, once you start to uncoil and you release, release that energy, then you're moving to the transition point. And then you're asking yourself the question, where does the control come from? Well, of course it comes from partially your footwork and your stroke mechanics, but the final amounts of control or the final instructions I like to call it, that comes from the left hand. So when you're striking the ball just before contact, as you're transitioning from that power stage to the control stage, this left hand is gonna determine how much spin do I wanna place on the ball? How much do I wanna impart a little additional power and hit it straighter or a combination of both? So the final instructions are happening from the left hand on contact and then you're transitioning through the follow through. So you're moving from the power stage and then into the final instruction stage. Let's go look at some professional players and show you those two fundamentals in action. That footage. Hey, let's watch these two fundamentals in action. First, we have Iga. What we're gonna pay attention to first on her is notice the flaw in her form where she takes a split step, the ball's coming towards her and the racket is delayed and actually goes forward a little bit first before she takes it back. This is more of a slingshot backhand, but she still, even with the delay and even with her racket moving forward first, she still gets fully loaded up and then drives through with her left hand. And one more time, split step, watch the racket be delayed. It should be back already, but it's not, but she still gets loaded up and then drives through forward. Now move into Carlos with perfect form except for his footwork on this, where he had to adjust with his left hand. Notice the split step, the racket immediately comes back, his right shoulder faces his opponent, he's fully coiled and loaded up to get the natural energy, and then he drives through and transition into his left hand. Right side energy, left side control. Split step, load up the energy abs are engaged even on the run then drive through with the left hand and last time right shoulder locked and loaded drive through left hand now we're moving on to center now with center we want to pay attention to is less the loading up now he does get fully loaded up but we're going to pay attention to his wrist lag so the second fundamental Watch how as the racket comes forward, the wrist lags back and then he throws the left hand and arm into the ball. So the take back loaded, watch the racket flick backwards and then forwards. So that's something if you are practicing wrist lag, you can emulate what center is doing here by as it moves forward, the wrist then lag back and then he drives forward. And this is one of the reasons as a two-hander, he's able to get his, almost as much pace on his forehand, on his backhand as he does his forehand. Moving on to Djokovic, very classic, locked and loaded, right shoulder facing the opponent, left arm extending, driving through with the left hand. Again, right shoulder loaded up, even on the run where you can barely get to the ball. Now in this one, you're gonna notice that his footwork is gonna be a little off, 
but he's going to adjust with his left hand. So he can't get into a fully loaded position. He tries, but then he has to flick with his left hand because the ball was so deep. This will be a more better example of both fundamentals at play. Right shoulder fully locked and loaded. Watch the left hand driving through the ball with a little bit of a lag. All right, now just watch a little bit in full speed on Novak. You're going to watch the loaded up position, how early he does it. This is really textbook backhand format. But what I want to talk about here is now that you know these two fundamentals, there's a lot of other things you could try and focus on, but you shouldn't. These are the two core fundamentals to make your backhand great. But just because you know what to do doesn't mean you can do it because you probably don't have enough time. You clearly don't have as much time as professional athletes do hitting these shots. So it's going to feel uncomfortable loading up to this extent when you're first doing it. You may say, well, this doesn't work for me. Well, that's nonsense. It will work for you. It just takes time and practice. You don't have the muscle training, the muscle coordination, and the dexterity yet to do it. But with practice and hitting thousands of balls, you certainly can do it. And you can work at both of these things almost at once because they happen in two different stages. You want to load up the shoulder and then work on the lag. That footage should really hit home and show you that those two fundamentals are non-negotiable. So let's answer them. Is it righty dominated or is it lefty dominated? It's both. Like most things in life, it's a balance. You store your energy from your right side and you transition to your left side. So it requires dominance for your right to generate the energy and it requires control and extra stability from your left hand in order to hit the perfect two-handed backhand. So the question also then becomes, should I work on a lefty forehand? Absolutely. A lefty forehand is going to help you manipulate the racket on contact and provide those final instructions. But at the same time, you always have to be working on making sure that shoulder turn is locked and loaded so that you can uncoil the energy and momentum into the shot so that you can actually control the ball with its final instructions with the left hand. So what do you need to practice and for how long? Well, that's the tricky part. These two fundamentals are not something that you just practice for a day, for two hours, or a week, or a month. These are habits, and habits take months and years and sometimes even decades. So when you're learning to hit your two-handed backhand, you're learning it for the rest of your life. So always turn and close the backhand. It does make it harder when you have to move to the ball. You're still going to have to make sure that you lock and load as you're moving because if you don't, you won't get the natural power. So it's a lifelong learning exercise to make sure you are loading up. Thanks for watching today's video. I'm going to aim big and I'd love to get to 100,000 subscribers. And if you haven't seen this video yet, I'll post it right here or right here. Please watch the 90s Phenom video. It's a very inspirational video for every tennis player and it's something every tennis player needs to watch. So check that out here and I'll see you in the next video.